How many revisions is considered normal? Hi, I'm Eldrick Tinkatoya. Thank you very much for tuning to this video and welcome to my channel or my page. So when you're starting out as a copywriter or a, or a creative professional, yes, it includes uh, to a degree jingle writers, um, graphic designers, a question which everyone faces is how many times should a work be revised? Obviously, I'm going to go to the other end first. We are not expecting an unlimited amount of revisions. It is absurd on part of the professional and absurd on part of the clients. I mean, clients have other better things to do, right? So, but at the same time, while ideally we're looking at no revision, that is almost unlikely. Why? Here's the reality. It depends on insights and understanding. When you're working with someone outside the organization, when, you're ex when you are outsourcing a task to a consultant, you're outsourcing a task to a professional, they don't have access to the same information that internal clients do or the contact points in the, in the organization do. So it is normal that over time, there will be changes. And as creative professionals, as applied creative professionals, if you will, it is not an attack on our um, capabilities, if you will. Like I said, you don't know what you don't know. And in this case, sometimes the, in your contact point within the organization also don't know. To manage this, there are many ways which uh, experienced professionals out there share. One is set outline in the brief specifically what is expected. So if it's a press release, how specific can you go? Well, you can go in terms of scope. You can go in term, you can be as specific as uh, what are the points that would like to be covered. For example, a quote, at least one quote from a spokesperson at least the um, summary of the whole event in one paragraph, and maybe a feature. Now, there are other templates that you can come follow with, like boilerplate and all that. that. That's a given, right? But let's talk about the press release proper. So we're looking at that, uh, that content. So do you, have, do you have a quote do you have for approval? Do you have the description of the event or the lodge or the partnership? Do you have a paragraph elaborating a bit where, when, why, how, you know, the, the common W's and H's, the questions to answer. And when you're looking at uh, brochures, for example, how many pages, how many items, what's the flow like? Usually, once the flow is ascertained by client or intermediary and the professional, it's easier to picture what to write. Now within the copy itself or the, the content itself, that's where things can become ambiguous again. It, become, it can become subjective. It is only objective when it's clear cut. For example, if you're writing a brochure for property, to sell a property. Obviously, the dimensions, the specifications are objective. It is what it is, right? So that one, you don't have to, you don't have to, um, you, you can expect minimal or no revision there. But the expression or selling of one product within that brochure, that is where revision, uh, revisions can come in. Perhaps it does not fit the language of the target audience. If you're selling entry-level homes for single families or young or working adults or first-time home buyers, it's different in terms of mannerism, in terms of tone, in terms of language style than if you're selling, say, a luxurious property. And it's true across the board. However, there are things that is universal irrespective of the target audience, irrespective of what you're writing for. And that is hygiene. When I say hygiene, yes, you can picture it as cleanliness, but we're also referring to 
the absence of grammatical errors, the absence of typos, complete sentences, if you will. I mean, yes, sometimes copywriters, we tend to use one word, one word sentence like yes, no, wait. Right? That's not what I mean. What I'm referring to is maybe a, uh, a sentence that you know the house is full stop. It happens because sometimes when you type, when you write, or you're preparing multiple drafts, you are doing, you are merging, you are expressing yourself. You're bringing what you have thought of onto paper or onto the keyboard or onto the monitor. So sometimes you have, you're thinking of multiple things at the same time. Therefore, there will be instances where you miss a certain, you think that you've completed a sentence and you move on to the next sentence or the next paragraph or the next page only to realize that, hey, that sentence is incomplete. So to avoid or minimize that, you can add another layer of copy editing or editing or proofreading before submitting that draft to the client. Right? So first, as I shared, manage expectation. Second, have a clear brief. Third, have that step where you proofread and edit before you submit that first draft. Yes, there are multiple drafts before the, the first draft or the draft that the client sees, the final, the revision, the revised one, the final version, if you will. And I cannot emphasize enough because the, the brief, the uh, other step for proofreading, editing, these are processes. Processes are not major, but not much of an issue. It is clear cut. You can agree, you can disagree. And before you approve or accept a project, it's something that needs to be ironed out. And the more people are involved, the more professionals are involved. Let's say you're dealing with a graphics designer, whether it's internal or external, the brief also has to be aligned, right? So these are processes and it can be improved over time. And there's a black and white trail. The one that we will always struggle with, especially as creative professionals, would be that internal uh, expectation. The internal expectation that we have towards ourself. We are, many people talk about managing the client's expectations. What I've found out is every now and then, and this is my own experience, I would be even more critical than the client. I would justify it, hey, I'm the, I, that's why they outsource the work to me, or that's why I'm assigned to do the work, because I'm supposed to worry for them. Now, this is, to a degree, a good approach, but it can hold you back. It holds you back from being able to deliver what you need to, de to, to deliver. It holds you back because you will always question the work that you do. When you're writing, when you're designing, it's not like drawing a straight line. I mean, a measure of a straight line is well, is it aligned to the corners? Can you can take a, you can take those um, protractors or if you were the ones that measure the angle, you can drag the guidelines on your software to show to see whether it's straight or not, whether it's aligned or not, right? But when it comes to expressive, uh, the expression of your copy or your text or the work that you're doing, there is no real guideline other than the obvious. So the subtle, subtle nuances, the subtle, subtle elements should not be, or the fear of making a mistake there should not be, the, it should not hold you back. And here is the thing, having an approach where number one, while you have safeguards, understand that you don't know what you don't know until it is made known. So mistakes will happen, revisions will happen. Accept that as part and parcel of our line of work. However, avoid obvious, glaringly obvious, factually misleading, factual mistakes or grammar typos and, uh, you know, typos, uh, obvious mistakes. Mistakes in terms of expression, again, is something that we can expect because 
We don't know what we don't know until we know what we don't know. That is why many consultants out there, whether it's economic consultants, um, engineering consultants, research consultants especially, they gather as much data as possible to ensure that whatever final product that they provide will be as sound and as concrete as possible, especially when it is subjected to peer review, when it is being reviewed by uh, future researchers or the like, when it's adopted into policy for instance, we try to gather as, mu as many data as possible to get that right insight. But when it comes to preparing a brochure, when it comes to preparing a TV script, no, you don't have that luxury of time of more often than not. And sometimes it's unnecessary. Once you have the parameters, meaning it should be contained in that brief, you have the uh, checkpoints, you have the check, uh, the, yeah, the checkpoints, if you will, the essential items, then, and clear it throughout your process, clear it with your uh, proofreading process, your editing process, so that whatever the clients receive, it will be the best that you have created. Oh, one more thing, please be careful of autocorrect. There are so many times, especially when you are doing it in multiple languages, where autocorrect kicks in and you may not realize it, it becomes a typo. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Do share with me your experience in how you manage expectations, especially your internal expectations, and how you manage um, your clients' expectations. What other measures do you do to tackle this issue of revision? What is reasonable for you and what is unreasonable? So thank you very much for watching. Do like, share, and subscribe to the channel or the page and thank you very much. Bye.